Welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Dr. T. Vijay Kumar. I am a professor of English at Osmania University, Hyderabad. This module is on African and Caribbean novel in English and overview. This is from the paper African and Caribbean literature in English. This module comprises two components African novel in English and Caribbean novel in English. And as the title suggests, what we are attempting here is an overview of these two. We'll begin with the African novel in English. But first, a clarification. In fact, when we say African novel, we must be familiar with this whole idea that there is no such thing called an African novel. Because one of the first things that we must remember is that Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent consisting of more than 50 countries. So how can we talk about one singular African novel? But we must also be familiar with the fact that African novel or what we call African novel consists of at least six distinct streams of writing. So African writing comprises First, the literary traditions of oral literature. Because although many African languages may not have script, almost all of them have a very rich oral tradition. So the writing of African literature cannot be completely sealed off from what went before the script evolved, that is oral narratives. So the first component of the African literary traditions is the oral traditions, the oral narratives. The second is what we call Anglophone African literature. What we mean by that is that literature written in the English language. Then we have Francophone African literature, which is African literature written in French. Then Lusophone African literature, that is African literature written in Portuguese. Then we have South African literature. Now, South African literature by and large is also written in English. But as you all know, the literary and particularly the political history of South Africa has been very different from the rest of Africa. And as a result, South African writer, though written in English, tends to be very different from the literary traditions in the rest of Africa. Then lastly, African literature written in African languages. We must now recognize the fact that African writing today is done in several African languages also. So when we talk about African literature, or for that matter, African novel, we must recognize that there are at least these six different streams of literary culture going into African literature. And the question that may arise, is it that why is it that countries in Africa, on the African continent write in so many different foreign languages? The reason, of course, is historical. As you all know, you know, there was a famous conference you know, at Berlin in 1884-85, where the European powers gathered in Berlin and divided Africa among themselves. So after 1884, what used to be 1,000 indigenous African cultures and societies have been grouped into some 50 countries, which were then divided among the various European powers. So, for example, there was the French presence in the east of Africa, the British presence in the west of Africa, then there was, you know, in the Congo, Belgium. So, th there were several European countries which were, had a very strong presence in Africa. And as a result, the languages of those colonial powers automatically came into African writing. This explains the number of different foreign languages which are used in different parts of the African continent. Now, when we talk about 
African writing or writing coming from Africa, one of the earliest texts, one of the earliest books to come out of Africa is by Equiano. Now, Equiano has written what is now considered a slave narrative. And this was titled The Interesting Narrative of the Life of Aulada Equiano. And this was published in 1789. So Equiano's book was probably one of the earliest to come out of Africa. Then in 1911, we have Joseph Hayford publishing a book titled Ethiopia Unbound. This was published in 1901 and this was one of the earliest books to be written in English coming from Africa. Then of course we have in the 1925 Thomas Mofolo's novel Chaka. And then we have Solomon Plages, Solomon Plages Moody published in 1930. Then in 1945 Peter Abraham's Song of the City which was published in 1945 is another early novel. So beginning with Equiano's slave narrative to the 1930s where we had writings of Solomon Plarche and uh, we have novels by Thomas Mofolo and then later by Peter Abrahams. So these are some of the examples of the early novels to come out of Africa. In the 1940s, African writing in English received a major boost from several social, political and literary movements. For example, the 1940s saw the establishment or actually Although it started earlier, the Pan-African movement became very strong in the 1940s. And the Pan-African movement stressed on collective self-reliance. And there were some major leaders, thinkers, philosophers and writers who supported this Pan-African movement. You know, people like, uh, people like um, Kwame Nkrumah, Marcus Garvey, William Dubois. You know, these were all people uh, who were part of the Pan-African movement lending their support to it. Then the, in the 1940s, again, we have the major movement called Negritude. You know, Negritude which emphasized blackness, which gave blackness a kind of a pride, a kind of respect. And of course, it's, it was not just a literary movement, it was a cultural movement and it was a political movement. But the Negritude movement was another major contributing factor towards the growth of African writing in English. And Negritude movement had towering personalities like Aimé Césaire and Le Paul Senghor and so on. And then again in the 1940s, an important uh, event was the establishment of the University College of Ibadan in Nigeria. Now this University College of Ibadan became a place of higher education where almost all the major African writers writing in English that you can think of went to. So this was a college where you had people like Ngugi, you know, almost everybody, Shoinka and uh, Achebe himself. So all these were in a way products of the University of Ibadan. So whether it is the Pan-Africanism or the Negritude movement or the establishment of University College of Ibadan. These are some of the uh, events that took place in the 1940s which gave a boost to African writing in English. Then in the 1950s, we have the beginnings of African novel in English. The 1950s saw the publication of Amos Tutiola's who is, of course, from Nigeria, a most Tutiola's you know, well-known novel, The Palm Wine Drinkard, which was published in 1952. And then Cyprian Equency published his first novel, People of the City, in 1954. Then, of course, the classic Things Fall Apart, which was published in 1958. So in a way, the African novel in English became an established genre in the 1950s.
Then the 1960s is a very interesting decade. The 1960s was the decade of African independence. But it was also the decade of great disappointment. Because several countries became independent in the 1960s. But many of them very soon lost their independence or immediately after independence several dictatorial leaders came to power in many of their many of these newly independent african countries so the optimism surrounding independence soon disappeared and what we had was a deep disappointment so 1960s is generally referred to in literary history as the decade of dissolution or the decade of disappointment so although it was the decade of African independence, it was also uh, the decade of disillusionment. And naturally, the novels published during the 1960s reflect this disillusionment. For example, we have novels in the 1960s like Gabriel Ocara's The Voice, 1964, and then Vole Shoinka's The Interpreters, 1965, Aikwe Armas, the Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born in 1968, and then Robert Serumaga's Return to the Shadows in 1969. So these are just a few examples, but what all of them have in common is this mood of disillusionment. Of course, this is the consequence of the events that took place in many African countries soon after independence. Then in the 1970s, there is an attempt to return to roots. And it was also a decade which saw a kind of rediscovery by the intellectuals, by the writers of indigenous roots. And the 1970s was also witnessed a kind of polemical posturing, usually a kind of a very ideological posturing in the 1970s. Some of the examples of the novels which show these tendencies published in the 1970s are, for example, Gugiba Thiongo's Petals of Blood, 1977, Vole Shoinka's Season of Anomie, published in 1973, and Aikwe Arma's The Healers, published in 1978. So these are some of the examples of the novels of the 1970s in which, you know, a kind of return to roots and a search for indigenous traditions and a kind of political posturing is visible in the novels of this decade. Since the 1980s, African literature in English received global recognition and achieved several milestones. For example, in 1986, Wole Shoinka became the first African writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. And then in 1991, Ben Okri received the Booker Prize. Then in 1988, Nagib Mehfuz received the Nobel Prize. 1991 saw Nobel Prize for Literature going to Nadine Gaudima. Then J.M. Kudzi from South Africa received the Booker Prize twice, that is in 1983 and 1999, and he also received the Nobel Prize in 2003. A young woman writer, Chimamanda Adichie, her first book received the Commonwealth Prize in 2005. And then, more recently, Doris Lessing received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2007. So since the 1980s, African literature not only achieved several milestones, but has been quite widely recognized for its vibrancy and for its vitality. Two important developments in the African novel in English since the 1980s. One is the rise of women novelists. Several women writers published their novels in the 1980s. And these novels strengthened the African novel in English. For example, you had writers like Zainab Alkali, then Titsi Dangramba, and then Yovan Vera, and as I mentioned earlier, Chimamanda Adichie are some of the young women writers who started publishing since the 1980s.
So the rise of the women novelists is one important development since the 1980s in the African novel in English. The second important feature of the African novel in English since the 1980s is the rise again of diasporic or minority writing. That is, novels written by ethnically minority groups. These include, for example, the, the famous uh, writings of M.G. Vasanji, who has written now about half a dozen novels, including his first you know, internationally acclaimed novel called The Gunnysack. So Vasanji, of course, is a very familiar name by now. And then he's also, you know, not the only one. He, there are several other writers from the minority ethnic groups, whether they are Asian, African, and uh, for example, there is Peter Nazareth, who published uh, novels like The General is Up and so on. So you have Vasanji, you have Peter Nazareth, and then there is a woman novelist, probably one of the very few uh, women novelists of Asian origin uh, in writing from Africa, and that is Jamila Siddiqui. She has published two novels so far called The Feast of the Nine Virgins and Bombay Gardens. And then more recently, you have Sultan Somji publishing a novel titled Bead Bai in 2013. So these are some of the examples of a new trend in the African writing, African novel in English since the 1980s, which is the writing by minority, that is ethnical, ethnic minorities or diasporic writers. So these are some of the developments in the African novel in English. To conclude this part of the discussion on the African novel in English, there is one particular way in which we can classify African novel in English. That is using history as a kind of a criteria. So if we use that as a criteria, then we can divide African novels in, in, into English into four different categories. That is, African novels dealing mainly with the past or with the beginning of colonialism. That is one category of African novels in English. Second, African novels in English dealing with the process of colonial domination. So that is novels which portray the process of colonial domination can be seen as a second group of novels. Then the third category would be those novels that recreate the struggle for independence. And the fourth group of novels can be those novels that evoke the post-independence social and political culture. So if we use the aspect of history which the novels deal with as a criterion, we can classify African novel into African novel in English into four different categories. So these are some of the you know, points about African novel in English. Now to move to the second component of this module, which is Caribbean novel in English. Now, first, a clarification about Caribbean novel, because very often people are confused between these two terms, Caribbean and West Indian. The term Caribbean or Caribbean literature refers to the geographical area of all Caribbean territories, irrespective of the language in which the literature is written. Because please remember that Caribbean literature is again written in several languages, French, Dutch, Spanish, English, and of course, several other uh, Creoles. So Caribbean literature refers to all these literatures. So Caribbean literature refers to a geographical area irrespective of the language in which the literature is written. Whereas West Indian literature refers largely to the British West Indies which is which writes in English. So today, the tendency is not to use the term West Indian literature, because the argument is, how can you separate literature written in one language, that is English, 
from literature written in various other languages like French, Spanish, or Dutch, and so on. So the, 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 the prevailing terminology is the Caribbean writing in English rather than West Indian literature. So Caribbean writing in English, in a way, the term uh, uh, that has gone out of context is West Indian literature, which in a way began to achieve wide currency in the 1950s. And it, it gained wide recognition because of the writings of several writers like George Lamming, Samuel Selwyn, V.S. Naipaul, and so on. So when these writers started writing, they of course all of them wrote in English, and so the term West Indian literature gained popularity during the 1950s. Some of the early novels to come from the Caribbean, in English of course, was one of the earliest was published in 1913. This is a book by E.G. D. Lesser, you know, titled Jane, A Story of Jamaica. This was truly the first significant English novel to come from the Caribbean. This was published in 1913, titled Jane, A Story of Jamaica. Then, the period between 1929 to 1933 saw flourishing of literary traditions in, in, on the Caribbean, particularly in English. And monthlies like New Beacon and Trinidad pub were published during this period and they provided an outlet for writing in English. Then in 1933, the well-known Caribbean writer Claude Mackay published his first novel, Banana Bottom, in 1933. And he followed it up with another novel titled Ginger Town in 1939. So in a way, the Caribbean writing, if you leave out the earliest 1913 novel, began in the 1930s. And then in the 1940s, there were several things that contributed to its growth uh, in, in, on the Caribbean. Some of these are, for example, several journals, literary journals, started to be published. Journals, literary journals like BIM, then you had uh, another journal called Focus, and then another annual uh, called Kaika or Al. These were all started in the 1940s. Then, very interestingly, the BBC Radio started a program called Caribbean Voices in the 1940s, which became a kind of a forum for Caribbean writers in English to exhibit their works, to present their works. So in the 1940s, on the one hand, the publication locally of several literary journals and the beginning of this BBC Radio program overseas uh, called Caribbean Voices were two important developments in the 1940s. Also in the 1940s was the first wave of Caribbean emigrants to England. A large number of writers you know, found it necessary to leave the Caribbean islands to make a living as writers. And these writers like George Lamming, Samuel Selwyn, V.S. Naipaul, Andrew Salke, you know, they all emigrated in the 1940s. You know, they all emigrated uh, to places like the UK, the USA, and Canada, and so on. So that was the first major emigration movement, uh, you know, in the in the Caribbean. Then, in 1949, the University of West Indies was founded, and these are some of the factors which contributed to the growth of uh, Caribbean writing in English, particularly the novel in the 1940s. The 1950s and the 60s saw the publication of, their, of the first novels of almost all the major Caribbean writers in English that one can think of. For example, George Lamming published his novel in The Castle of My Skin, which soon very quickly became a classic study of Caribbean life. As you probably know, that this is a novel which traces the growth of a child, a boy, 
from childhood, a kind of Bildungsroma, uh, which, which soon became an international, uh, not, not just a bestseller, but internationally recognized. And the important feature of the success of George Lamings in The Castle of My Skin was that it became a catalyst for the publication of novels by Caribbean writers in, in England. In the 1960, Wilson Harris published his first novel, Palace of the Peacock, which of course was followed by three other novels, which came to be known altogether as the Guyana Quartet. Then in 1961, V.S. Naipaul published A House for Mr. Biswas, which is probably the most anthologized, the most prescribed uh, novel of all Caribbean, write, Caribbean novels in English. So V.S. Naipaul's A House for Mr. Biswas, published in 1961, became a widely recognized and widely anthologized novel and probably the best known novel to come out of Caribbean writing in English. In 1966, Jean Rees published her famous novel, The White Sargasso Sea. And White Sargasso Sea is a kind of prequel to Charlotte Bronte's Victorian novel, Jane Eyre. And White Sargasso Sea provides an alternative to Jane Eyre. And Jean Rees's novel became a kind of a feminist rereading of the racist writing uh, of, of, of the Victorian period. So whether it is V.S. Naipaul or whether it is Lamming or whether it is Wilson Harris or Jean Rees, they all published in the 1950s and 16s. This was the decade when the Caribbean novel in English really became an established genre. The 1970s onwards saw the rise of several other writers, younger writers, like Roy Heath from Guyana, Earl Lovelace, Jamaica Kincaid, and Carl Phillips. So these are the writers, some of the writers who are continuing the tradition of the Caribbean novel in English. And since the 1970s, Caribbean novel in English, or Caribbean writing in English, received two major international recognitions. In 1992, Derek Walcott from St. Lucia became the first Caribbean writer to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. And then in 2001, V.S. Naipaul, who was born uh, in Trinidad and of course who is a resident of the United Kingdom since the 1950, received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2001. So the Caribbean novel in English, which is often seen as the most representative genre of Caribbean literature in English. Although some contest this view because some critics feel that the short story really is the most visible and also the most indigenized form of writing in the Caribbean. However, Caribbean novels in English, in a way, have always represented Caribbean literature in English. To summarize, this part of the discussion on the Caribbean novel in English, there are three points that I wish to make. One is that most of these islands have become independent since the 1960s. So in a way, all of them are independent island nations. And yet, they share several common features. The English language, of course, is one common shared heritage. But apart from that, there are several political, cultural, and social ties which make it useful for us to look at this entire body of literature as one rather than as divided by nationalities. So Caribbean writing in English, although it comes from different independent nations, can be seen as one literature. And this is what Kenneth Ramchand argues in his well-known book, the West Indian novel in English. The third important feature that I want to emphasize about the Caribbean novel in English is that although the range of themes and the range of topics 
that Caribbean novels in English deal with is as wide as it is in any other national literature. There are certain features that are common to most Caribbean novels in English. For instance, even today, many Caribbean novels continue to grapple with issues like history, ethnicity, language, and race, of course, and gender. So there are some features which are common, which are recurrent, which enable us to see the similarities among the various Caribbean novels in English. So to summarize this module, we discussed two different components in this module. One is the African novel in English and the second is the Caribbean novel in English. To summarize the discussion on the African novel in English, let's just look at some of the major points. One, the African novel in English began to emerge in the 1930s. Then it received a major boost in the 1940s for various reasons, whether they are political reasons or cultural reasons or simply educational reasons. Then the 1950s saw that African novel in English became a well-established genre. And then from the 1960s, there have been several kind of changes in the way in which African novels have been written. However, African novel continues to flourish and continues to get wide international recognition. And because it is still very, very vibrant, thanks to the contribution of women writers, and writers belonging to ethnic minorities or diasporic writing. For these factors, because of these factors, African writing in English, African novel in English continues to be lively and vibrant. The second component was the Caribbean novel in English. To summarize that discussion, the Caribbean novel in English also had its beginnings in the 1930s. Then, like in Africa, several features contributed to the growth of the novel in the 1940s. But again, all the major writers that we can think of today started publishing in the 1950s and 60s, which was also the period when the Caribbean novel in English kind of flourished. Then, from the 1970s, Although there are several writers who continue to uh, provide wonderful novels, Caribbean writing in English, in a way, seems to be dominated by the Caribbean novel in English. Although short story writers have come onto the scene, even today, Caribbean writing is dominated by the Caribbean novel in English. And lastly, history, identity, ethnicity, language, are some of the themes that are common and recurrent in the Caribbean novel in English. So these are some of the important aspects of African and the Caribbean novels in English that we attempted to analyze in this module.